You're listening to Payments Innovation, a podcast dedicated to helping business leaders navigate today's global digital economy. Looking to learn about the latest innovations within fintech and payments? You've come to the right place. Let's get into the show. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Payments Innovation Podcast. Uh, Really excited to be joined by Mark Ridley from Green Shoots FX. Mark, uh, can you just give the the audience uh, a quick introduction? Uh, It'd be great to hear about your background. I think, you know, how you came through correspondent banking. Uh, and we'll get to, you know, what ultimately led you to to start Green Shoots FX. But if you could start with your background, that'd be great. Yeah, thanks very much, Jeff. Appreciate you uh, taking the time today. Um, I, I guess the briefest of, of backgrounds would be I've been at this a, a very, very long time. Uh, and it started out over 20, I'm embarrassed to admit almost, over 25 years ago um, in the UK uh, in branch banking. And then very quickly from there, I progressed into uh, working for a couple of international banks and moved into sales and relationship management, initially focusing on uh, corporates, actually, UK and European corporates. Um, But it wasn't too long before I then found myself at Wells Fargo or First Union National Bank, as it was back in the day, that's now Wells Fargo, um, and managing transaction banking relationships with other banks in Europe. And that's that's really where I guess the the, the correspondent banking um, interest for me really kicked in. Uh, the payments interest really kicked in a few years before when uh, when I was on the on the corporate side. But um, uh, it wasn't then too long before um, bouncing around from one institution to the next. And that wasn't really because I was career minded. It was more that other institutions kind of looked at what I was doing and said, hey, why don't you come across uh, and do this for us? But at the very core of of the product set that we've always had, uh, our disposal has been FX payments. And so we've gotten to know the various corridors and various banking arrangements and traditional correspondent banking methods very, very well over the, well, certainly over the last 20 years. And then five years ago, we decided, my my family and I, my wife is actually from the States, and so we made that decision to, to move to the US. Um, and so I joined BMY Mellon, uh, where I was heading the uh, Treasury Services Sales and Relationship Management Team for North America specifically focused on the on the bank segment again. And so for the last five years, we've, we've probably met with, or I've probably met with like two or 300 financial institutions, um, banks and credit unions, large banks, community banks. Um, and um, uh, yeah, we, that's kind of like how we've, uh, how we've evolved over, over uh, the last kind of quarter of a century. Yeah. So you have, Obviously, you have a massive knowledge of the cross-border payments and FX world, um, which kind of led you, I think, to where you where you're at today for for starting Great Shoots FX. Could, so, what is it? What is the key um, goals or values of Green Shoots FX? You know, and, and based on your knowledge, what led you to believe that there's an opportunity in this market um, for to start this business? Yeah, so we're we're one of several thousand institutions out there. Um, even if we put the banks and the credit unions to one side, what do we got in the states now? Like eight thousand or so um, of those, and then there's Money, right? yeah, exactly right. And then there's tens of thousands, almost of uh, of companies very similar to us. But um, so look. I guess we weren't put off by the fact that there is such a, a wide variety of competition out there. Um, one of the analogies that was kind of told to me recently was, look, nobody nobody looked at the Ford Motor Company and said, okay, look, they've done it. Let's just not even bother trying to develop something any better than than that, right? So, you know, we, we just, we, with the experience that we have in terms of calling on banks and getting a sense of, and I'm going to be very careful how I say this, but like just getting a sense that a number of institutions have frontline staff that know what they know, they manage relationships to a certain degree, but very rarely do they really want to 
engage themselves in foreign exchange conversations, right? So again, trying to be very careful because I know that's uh, that's not everybody, um, but generally people are just willing to do enough to satisfy their client need. We've always been about, or I certainly have always been about, my business partners have as well, wanting to go above and beyond. And so knowing how convoluted the process can be for banks moving money overseas and also the pricing, the margins that are typically offered by some institutions being maybe a little bit more wide than we would like corporates to have. Um, we just felt like we could pull something together ourselves and, um, and put that out there as a, as a viable solution. But I'll also say that that was, that, that was very much a pipe dream for us over the course of many years, we've been talking about this and then just the, you know, the opportunity to do something about it presented itself earlier on this year. We said, okay, look, maybe now's the right time. And, um, a number of individuals have even said to us, like, why now during a, 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 a pandemic? Well, small businesses are hurting, even medium sized businesses are hurting. And so if we can provide, uh, some advice and guidance to them such that they pay less for their foreign currency meaning that they might save a couple of thousand bucks or tens of thousands of dollars. That could be the difference between not meeting their financial obligations when they fall due. It might help them prevent um, from having to furlough Bob in the warehouse, who's a key kind of component to their day-to-day -day business, right? So um, yeah, we just we just felt like now could be the, the actually the best time when people really do need to um, tighten the, the, the purse strings effectively and there are many companies out there as well that, that we know that we've met that we've even spoken to that don't know what they don't know and so they kind of with the best will in the world blindly go about their business because one of the phrases which i hate the most is that's the way we've always done it and so but they don't know any different um maybe they're sending us dollars overseas instead of um investigating the need to actually pay in a foreign currency so they agree a price with an exporter. They're happy with that price. It's in US dollars. But through us, we know that we can help them drive down that that dollar value. So by being invoiced in in the local currency, for example, with the exporter. So there's there's that. And I'm trying to be very careful as well because we don't want to give away too much of our secret sauce <laughs> and you know what we're looking at and what we're trying to trying to do. But we're you know we're also keen to put out some thought leadership pieces as well to 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 generate that awareness particularly for those like i say that don't know what they don't know to maybe read some of the things that we put out and say ah you know what that's applicable to me i get that i understand that let me investigate more yeah yes yeah, so i guess based on your knowledge in going to these smaller fis in your previous role at bank of new york mellon that's where you realize how underserved a lot of these, I guess, SMBs or SMEs in the U in the U.S. Uh, are when it comes to the FX space. Um, <clears throat> and then COVID obviously precipitated uh, the need to tighten up the purse strings. Uh, and I, I'm assuming, you know, and I, I haven't done a lot of research in this, but <clears throat> also COVID with everyone working more remotely, I, we've seen a lot of interest, uh, specifically when it comes to payroll. Um, and a lot of these small companies if they're digital, um, yeah. they may even be paying somebody in India or the Philippines or the Ukraine. Um, so we're seeing a lot of traction in that market. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting you say that because um, part of our website does describe um, companies that have overseas subsidiaries, maybe overseas offices, um, and the need to maybe pay salaries or pension payments. And so through our bulk upload capability that that also makes life a lot easier for your uh for your average corporate treasurer as well mm -hmm. now i know you guys did a lot of discovery um just for full transparency to the audience you know green shoots fx is a partner of currency cloud uh and you're going to market with with our platform can you tell the audience, because a lot of our audience is payments industry professionals who might be thinking right. you know something like what you're doing uh, to try and change the market and better serve the SMEs out there. It'd be great to learn a little bit more about the process that you went through in the last 12 months or so in, you know, 
looking at all the options is how you could actually build the company maybe sure uh well i think it'd be fair to say that at the beginning uh, beginning of the journey like we didn't know what we didn't know either so um it becomes a bit of a like anything i guess like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy and in the in the once you start peeling away uh the layers of the information and you find yourself being introduced to others who introduce you to others then your you know obviously your knowledge base is going to grow so we just made a couple of tentative inquiries to a couple of tech companies and and, and, and particularly a couple of companies that, that i knew in the uk that were already doing this kind of thing um and they then introduced me to some other companies that were doing something very similar and also to, to some fintech companies that could at least give us some guidance so then when you start having those discussions and knowing what you know about the industry anyway the the questions that you ask um in the due diligence process then very quickly uncovers who's really good at it and who's not very good at it and then we found a couple of a couple of companies that that we really liked um but still felt like there must be more out there and um well once we were turned on to currency cloud um the discussions became very apparent that sorry became very apparent during the discussions that you guys could satisfy the need that we had um and and there were there are definitely fintechs let's say out there that that can provide maybe some bells and whistles here but were kind of falling short here and some that were good in other areas but fell short elsewhere with currency cloud we i felt like or we felt like um we could get our cake and eat it so um all, all of the individual components um or all of the individual reasons why we buy any service and particularly from from currency cloud uh could actually stand up on their own right but then collectively it just makes it a little bit more of a, a compelling and easier decision to to go with uh, with currency cloud quite frankly great and as far as you know obviously we we're starting with uh you know the serving these SMBs could you talk a little bit about your market research like what do you what are you seeing out there as far as the rates that some of these SMBs are getting at their local banking partners what's the kind of the education that process that you go through uh when you're consulting with one of your potential clients we know that there are companies out there that are in need of of uh finer margins and then just over the course of the last six months, really just researching through um, discussions with uh, individuals that we know, with banks that we know, research on LinkedIn has, has put us in touch with a lot of companies and a lot of CFOs. And we've had a lot of very interesting discussions, probably more so over the last kind of two or three weeks, really, where um, CFOs and treasurers and, and COOs in particular, they're aware of the margins that in many cases the margins that they're they're currently getting through um maybe even some of the the kind of like larger national banks here in the states but always have found an excuse not to really investigate doing anything about it because over here they've got a list of like 50 other things that they're already dealing with right and so it's about prioritization so um but you know we, we we're trying to expedite a lot of those conversations to say hey you know let's try and move this foreign exchange piece to that that critical kind of list of 50 things and maybe even kind of move it up the pecking order but but certainly through just through the conversations that we've had um that have then yielded hey thanks for talking to us and thanks for helping us out could you also go talk to my sister company or to other companies that we know um that are non-competitors and provide the same kind of valuable advice and help to them as well so mm -hmm. again this is really kind of like starting to to gather momentum um in a very very short space of time so before we know it we'll probably be looking at having to expand the team more quickly than we than we had anticipated which was probably going to be more of a 2021 initiative but it's probably going to be more of a uh, a kind of a december kickoff for us Great, great. And I know you mentioned some thought leadership stuff. Obviously, we're on the podcast here. I've seen you do a few videos. Um, 
What, what do you have in mind in, in terms of getting the word out there and, and doing more thought leadership? We always love to hear about that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, um, I, I, some of the basic stuff really um, around um, highlighting to certain companies that maybe, and I, I use this as an example earlier on, but certainly highlighting to certain companies about uh, their, their current kind of cash management arrangements. So if they are invoicing, uh, sorry, or being invoiced in US dollars, to just draw their, their attention to the fact that they are being invoiced in US dollars and that it can make some sense to to look to be invoiced in uh, in the local currency. We also want to put out a couple of pieces um, specifically aimed at the community banks and the regional banks, and particularly some of the smaller credit unions that the um, maybe they're losing business because their clients are asking them for some international payment needs. They can't be met. And so the client has to go find that elsewhere and then runs the risk of having um, that client move all of their business to the larger provider because in many cases, the larger provider is going to have a minimum revenue requirement that's probably not going to be met by one or two payments. Mm -hmm. And so uh, so the corporate's going to be, in many cases, potentially forced to move their business, right? So we want to help community banks, regional banks, credit unions of, of any size really retain their clients so we've got some ideas that that we that we're going to put out that can uh, that can help support that um initiative yeah i think that's interesting so you would maybe even potentially partner with some of these smaller fis around the us the community institutions who are so underserved as we know i think it's like 70 yeah. percent of these companies these banks are using wells fargo um to get their fx so yeah, I think there's a huge yeah. gap there where it's an FX firm like yourself could step in and then be a partner to the bank to actually better serve their customers. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And, and so one of the comments I made earlier that, that I really, that drives me nuts, which is that that's the way we've always done it. The other, the other comment, and, I, and I've heard this a lot over the last few years or so is, um, but Mark, clients are not asking for that. <laughs> and the reality is they are asking, they're just not asking you. Mm. So the, with the best will in the world, um, it, it, it is, it, it's tough to kind of monitor that and manage that within the regional institution, because often that question might be asked of a frontline um, employee, could be a, uh, could be a bank teller, could be the relationship manager. And, the, and, the, and that's where the buck stops and that's it. And the conversation ends there rather than the RN then maybe taking that to the relevant person internally within the organization. That's the person that I'm usually connected with. So, you know, in, in a way, I think the clients are asking, they're just not maybe asking the right individual within the company or at least the, uh, within the bank, but, or at least the message is not getting to the right person within the bank, but we can absolutely assure any, credit union and community bank of any size that they do have clients that do have this need. Mm -hmm. And whilst maybe that entity, that business is potentially being serviced by a larger institution now for maybe some of these payments, it's only a matter of time before that bank is, is going to be forced to say to the, to the mutual client, like move your business, get it across to us now. Right. So we can help, institutions protect their existing uh, revenue by potentially partnering with us and we've, we've we've already got a couple of good conversations underway actually um and i'm going to look to my right here which is my <laughs> whiteboard of to-do list which has actually now gone beyond the whiteboard and is now on the walls um we're, we're, that, that's going to be a big push for us that's going to be a big push push for us but just even over the last week since we've launched and since we've started putting some pieces out there We've already had some proactive um, uh, correspondence with uh, some smaller banks and, and credit unions uh, across the US already. So uh, it, the proof is definitely in the pudding, um, but we know there's a market for what we can offer. Yeah, I think that's that's a huge market in the US. Um, so that'd be, and I think a lot of the FIs are starved for that. But like you said, it's a lot, half the time they say it's not a problem, but I hope. I think that's changing. Um, we're yeah. going to start seeing it as more of a problem. Yeah, 100% agree. 100% agree. Now, obviously, you're starting with payments and FX. 
to to power to these SMBs. Is there, you know, we, is, do you have any plans of developing further beyond um, the solution that you have today in terms of maybe offering, you know, small business customers more of a even some lending services or a potentially debit card? Have you thought of any of that or what's your idea, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the the danger is that we we don't necessarily want to try and be all things to all people. We want to try and be niche in what, what we can offer. But at the same time, if you have the attention and, the, and you have the audience of a, of a CFO or a treasurer or a finance person, they're going to have more than one problem that's going to require solving. So if we can at least have in our toolbox um, either additional products and services that we could offer, or at least where we've investigated partner services that we could refer them to, then we think that we can have a more kind of like holistic supply chain value proposition. So yeah, look, we, you know, we, we're definitely investigating what, what merchant services companies are out there. Um, I like the idea of uh, accounts payable solutions. So um, like converting checks to virtual cards, for example, there's a, there's a num number of very good companies out there, but we don't just want to refer clients to them just because they might think that we're getting a referral fee. We're only interested in referring where we've done our due diligence and we're referring to a quality institution that's going to support the business of, of, of our client. Trade services is also another as well. Trade has, has been part of my um, part of my arsenal also for about 20 something years. So if we can figure out what we can offer in and around the trade space, I think that um, with what I've just mentioned, we'll, we'll provide a nice bag of, of tricks, if you will, that will satisfy most of the kind of current climate issues that, that companies are facing today. Yeah, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to build that kind of network and ecosystem where you can, obviously, you're going to focus on the FX and the payment side of things. Sure. And managing that risk um, and ensuring that they're not getting hosed on these fees. Uh, but yeah, there's you could e easily bring in a, a third party to help with some kind of cash advance. There's a lot of, you know, the merchant cash advance uh, platforms are really kind of expanding. Right. Rapidly. I think that's a really interesting market. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've had two of those types of conversations to that, excuse me, today. And we, we, again, we weren't really thinking about potentially having to go down that road until maybe a 2021 initiative. But um, again, through the some of the pieces that we've pushed out through some of the marketing efforts that we've had, people are finding us already. And we've been effectively out there for a week. And so like, we, we're really kind of surprised about the attention that we're getting and it's it's been a little bit overwhelming so uh, every now and again i've kind of just got to sit here and just kind of take take stock take take a breath um and and prioritize like okay, what do we want to do and when do we want to do it um you know and and that's changed half a dozen uh, half a dozen times or so over the course of the last six months and then easily 15 to 20 times just in the last week alone. Yeah. So I'm trying to ignore that whiteboard that's out of the corner of my eye because it is just getting out of control. Yeah. One thing at a time, right? Well, listen, Mark. Uh, yeah. Um, we're, just, we're really excited and it's awesome to see all the, the success that you guys have had and kind of the traction you're gaining in the market. Um, and we're happy to be a part of your success and, and hopefully we'll continue to do that for a long time. For everyone who's listening, what is the best place to, to get in touch? The website? Yeah, look, you can get, get in touch with us through uh, greensheetsfx.com um, or you can get in touch with me directly at mark.ridley at greenshootsfx.com. Um, I'm on LinkedIn as well. Um, hopefully you'll see some of our posts out there and find those uh, find those interesting. But um, we're, yeah, look, we're, we're happy to entertain a discussion with, um, with any company. Um, no matter how big or, or small the, um, the transactions that they might have. So, you know, we designed Green Shoots FX because we want to provide a service to all, essentially. Great. Awesome, Mark. Well, thanks again for your time um, and look forward to staying in touch. 
Talk to you soon. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for your time too. And thanks to Currency Cloud. Take care. Currency Cloud is an online payments company that makes international money transfers fast and simple for businesses. We're building a borderless future where international transactions are seamless for a better user experience. Discover the world's most trusted payment platform and our toolkit of developer-friendly APIs at currencycloud.com. You've been listening to the Payments Innovation Podcast. To ensure that you never miss an episode, subscribe now in iTunes or your favorite podcast player. Thanks for listening. Until next time.